Okay, so Merlanga is meeting 10th of October, 2023. And um, I will share screen and we can get started. One moment, it's just the relevant things just disappeared. Okay, uh, share screen. All right, so um, Yu Hang kindly posted the agenda of minutes from last time for people to have a look at. Again, lots of little things here. Um, but, uh, you know, essentially, as as always, I, I guess, interested in um, updates from the Warwick team on any compound measurements and from Barton team on any um, soaking co-crystallization that might have been going on and um, any updates from you hang on chemistry, but I think there's he's still prepping molecules for um, for you guys to remeasure it at Oxford. Uh, sorry, at Oxford, at Warwick. Um, let me just uh, share one thing very quickly, which is the current status of the uh, CC4 car proposal that we're going to be putting in. So um, this is now going to come to Warwick for comments on your ability to um, do the testing of the molecules. So we, we've we gone back and forth. Uh, uh, Yu Hang's been writing a lot of this. Joe's been providing huge amounts of inputs to this thing. Um, and we've been tidying it up uh, to make a request for some synthesis from CC4 Carb. And um, the the ask is is down is down here somewhere, but there is a part of it where uh, we need inputs from from Warwick about the testing size. So it's the testing mm -hmm. bit here. So we need a, a little bit of inputs from what you guys are happy to commit to for the proposal. Like I said, the idea is that CC Fogub does the chemistry after we disc if we're approved and after we do the description uh, discussion of which molecules exactly we might be interested in, they'll need to be evaluated, and that's where we need to provide that. So. Uh, no need to say anything now, but we'll send this over and maybe you could discuss it locally and, and just check what, what you feel happy to say you can provide for this. On the assumption that we get molecules in, what, six months or something, I guess, because it's got to go in, it's got to be viewed, it's got to go to the board, it's got to get approved, we've got to decide exactly what the molecules are they're going to make, they're going to make some, so it'll be a while, but we have to say something here about the fact that we can actually test them. Good. I hadn't thought about um, adding something in here about getting crystallography done, but it might make sense for any molecules that are looking good. If uh, Anyway, see what you think, um, and, and we'll send that over. I think it's ready to come to you guys now for, for that input. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Um, yeah, all right, so um, from my side, I just wanted to make sure people had a chance to report on anything that's happened in the last um, month or so. Obviously, you know, the um, the Yi Wei compounds, the multi-targeting compounds that we talked about last time are the most exciting new thing. And I've uh, shared that stuff with Guy as a potential starting point for him to evaluate against the TB Merlin gazers. Um, did, did Adrian or did you have anything else you wanted to add on any new data that you might have generated in the last month? Uh, well, the data I presented in the last meeting, I think, went as far as Mer E with C and D remaining. And I posted, I think, on the 12th, the complete set with all the ligases. I can present C and D now in that context if you want. Um, otherwise, the the, the data is available on Wait. the GitHub site. <laughs> Thank you for posting that. That's really good. Did you want to just say a few words about it? If you wouldn't mind, it would be... Okay. It helps so, us all get here and, and look at it together. All right. So if I share my screen. Okay. Can we all see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, so this is part of the complete data set. So if I just go back to the title page, so to give you an overview of what I'm talking about. So basically this was the screening of the uh, compounds received from Atom Wise and a few others as well. Um, eventually against the entire pseudomonas originosa pathway mer ligases, um, C through to F. Um, if I gallop through the first few, because you've seen them anyway, 
we we have an, a couple we have an enzyme assay that uses um three coupling enzymes the activity of which we have to check against the compounds we're testing against the ligases in question uh the the assay is robust in that you can uh, get away with an inhibition of 50% of the coupling enzymes without impacting upon the ligase activity. So this first slide, slide is a triage um, that eliminates those compounds that will actually hit the coupling system and and not reflect them. So <clears throat> with this assay, uh, we went through MERD. Um, and if I just skip this slide because it, it's just reproduced here. So here I've winnowed out any any hits against the coupling system. Uh, the purple bars are standard ADPCP <clears throat> inhibition. That's, um, that's no ATP analog. And anything greater than 50% uh, inhibition, I'm guessing, I put on the left-hand side in blue. And so I've been through... D in this fashion. Uh, Mer E, similarly. Um, and at this point, we start to see molecules that significantly impact the activity of both ligases. Um, and then Similarly, are uh, mercy and mercy proved to be particularly prone to inhibition uh, by the by these this group of compounds. So basically, I had a complete uh, uh, twenty or so compounds which exerted greater than greater than fifty percent inhibition. And <clears throat> again, there was a cohort that targeted all three ligases. Um, and then finally, I did the same thing with MRF. And the take home is that amongst the atomized compounds we've been working with, seven uh, appear to have greater than 50% activity at half millimolar against C, D, E, and F. And that's really where we are at the moment. So we've still got a lot of work to do. We've still got IC fitties to do. Um, and um, of course, there are, there's a structural biology aspect of this as well. So um, that's where we are. Right. Yep, it's very exciting. Um, so yes, yeah, structures and IC fifties, I guess that's that's it, isn't it? So that we yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When the IC fifty won... numbers under hill slope and then obviously the structural information. Yeah. Yeah, and I can tell you what I've been doing about these compounds. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop sharing that slide. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so for anyone who wants the the raw data that uh, Adrian's generated, it's um, currently sitting on the issue for last month's meeting. That's where it is. All right. So, I've been doing a lot of crystallization experiments. So I have not waited for IC fifty. I couldn't wait. <laughs> So I just thought right. I made um, I made some so everything I've been doing for crystallography as we agreed a while ago is on E. coli, and then the SSGCID is doing Pseudomonas and Acetinobacter. Um, but again, I'm happy to take over for example Pseudomonas uh, in some cases and then try something here as well if the is if it is too much for the SSGCID and you know we can maybe split things in a different way. But anyway, for now I'm just using Nikolai mu ligases. So I made mu C, um, and I did co-crystals for the OSA compound, all of these compounds, right? Uh, co-crystallized with uh, E. coli mu C in these cases, mu D in these cases, and mu E in these cases. Every co-crystallization experiment involves six different uh, commercial screens. So it was a lot of crystal plates. Apart from that, I also set up some APO E. coli C to be able to see if I could do some soaking eventually. Uh, and also the my crystallization uh, E. coli mu D and mu E uh, conditions that I usually do. Um, all right, so 
I haven't gotten any co-crystallization experiments for mu D and E for the OCE compounds. They haven't grown yet, but I've got lots of crystals with mu C, which look amazing. They're very big. It's really nice. But the best solution that I could get was 4.2 angstroms in one of the crystals, and the rest of them were like six angstroms, things like that. I still saw, I, I saw like about a tenth of the data set that I collected, but I can't see any compounds in there, which might be related to the resolution, right? Because six answers is really low to just be able to see anything really. Um, yeah, so that's where I am at. So I think they miss a little bit more optimization. Uh, I'm still hopeful that something is happening in the presence of the compounds because how the protein is behaving in the APO conditions is different. The crystals that have grown are much different. They're much smaller, uh, less reproducible in different conditions and things like that. Uh, and then I also got some correlation between how potent they were on the presence of inhibition uh, experiments and how many crystals I was getting on the hits like on the, on the crystallization screens. So there's some correlation there as well. So this one gave me the most of the crystals, 147, the compound 147, for example. Um, yeah, then I have also done co-crystallization with MUD and the enamine compounds, these last three compounds. Uh, nothing has grown yet. Uh, I'm hoping they might grow, but yeah, I don't know. Um, and I performed soaking for E. coli, mu D, and E for all the enamine hits, the old ones and the new ones that we got, and the, also these compounds. I'm just trying everything because these, co these crystals are new crystals that haven't gone through all the process of uh, temperature changing in the room because we got a new incubator and everything has been quite stable in the incubator. So I just thought I'll try it again. The crystals behave a lot better during the, during the soaking especially with the old compounds that I knew how they were behaving, but I could I could still not see any compounds bound. And in this case, it's not um, related to the um, a resolution because we are getting data sets from 1.7 astrons up to 2.1 astrons. So yeah, in this case, it's just, it's not getting into the crystal. These compounds are not getting there. It probably is because of the confirmation because all these are APO crystals. So I'll keep trying and I'll keep going. Uh, with this, but I need to do another run of protein purification for this. Um, but yeah, so I'm a bit disappointed that I couldn't get anything on the New Year's Eve, but it's clearly something happening. So I think um, it might be a worth. Um, it might be worth thinking on sending some of the of these compounds to the SSCID and maybe they can try with another organism, or I just give it a try to another organism. I don't know. If this is up to for discussion. Depends on uh, what's the pipeline there. Well, we're always happy to send protein. Like, I don't have a problem even if we both are trying to do the same thing. Because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that's the way, sometimes crystals just grow at one plate with one water and not the other. And yeah. so uh, I'm fine to send you pr protein. That would be good. Yeah, that would save me some time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So Laura, in the, this is Joe. So in the yeah. structures you are getting, um, I'm just curious, uh, are you seeing, is this in the presence of either sulfate or any kind of phosphate? You see? Uh, no, not for this first round. Um, but I can redo it now with a smaller amount of, of plates uh, because I know some of the, now I know some of the conditions are not giving any hit, so I can, lower the amount of place that I'm screening for co-crystallization for the new C. And I can try to add other um, ions and or phosphates and things like that. Yeah, no, yeah, right, so no, okay. So so first of all, as I recall, I think there was at least some discussion and questions about for these compounds, the OSA compounds, that these are not not binding at the ATP site, as I recall. And Adrian can address that. Um, but specifically for the enamine hits, these are all targeting specifically trying to target uh, this alpha helix uh, where the phosphates, or the, excuse me, you know, the phosphates of ADP are bound, bound to. So my question was in 
in your structures with these 1.7 to 2.3 ionic centers, you're not seeing the ligand bound. Mm -hmm. Is is sulfate present in their yes. crystallization conditions? And do you see sulfate bound? Because in the crystal structure of so, uh, forget one uh, of the crystal mm -hmm. one of the crystal structures we have. There's a sulfate that's bound to the alpha helix. So I'm just asking, do you see any sulfate or phosphates bound in these stru structures that you're we have high resolution? I do. I do for mu D. I don't for mu E. And I have tried before with mu E to soak as well, and I couldn't soak it either. Uh, but yeah, mu D has it and is crystallizing with um, sulfate as well. Right. So okay. what I'm what I'm trying to say here is that if you include if if you have sulfate in your crystallization conditions, then these compounds, which are relatively weak, are having to compete with sulfate bound where we're trying to displace it. So the re I'm just guessing here that one of the things might be that if you're having sulfate in your crystallization conditions, that one of the reasons you might not see anything bound is because these compounds are trying to, weaker compounds are trying to compete and displace the sulfate into um, your, your, your crystals. Could be, but I can't get a mu D crystals without sulfate though. So we'll have to go to another um, organism. Okay. Anyway, all right. So just yeah. Okay. All right. So that's the, that would be the limitation for immunity. Uh, I have to say the um, the sulfate is in, in some cases is not as strong as others. Um, the density. Mm. Okay. So yeah, but I, again, like I don't know how it is impacting the the soaking either. Um, yeah, it could be. It could be. Yes. So so if these compounds. Uh, don't compete with the ATP binding site. Well, that's what we believe. Um, might it actually be worth putting in an ATP analog like ADP-CP or even ADP itself and trying to co-create a ternary complex? Yeah, I can try that as well. Because yeah. it, it could easily be that if an order mechanism going on, that this these things require... Uh, something else bound before they actually bind and won't bind the the apo enzyme. Then that might explain what's going on, or mm -hmm. contribute to it anyway. Yep, that's a good idea, Adrian. Yeah, that can be tried. Thank you. Okay, thank you for all the trials. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. I wish it was more <laughs> positive in the outcome. Um, I mean, the fact that you're seeing differences in the crystals when you add the compounds, I mean, yeah. there's no there's no value really in doing a um, a thermal shift measurement, right? Because you know visually that the compounds are doing something. Yeah, there's something definitely going on. I can still try the DSF experiment, some thermal shift experiment. We just don't have the proper setup, so I need to optimize that. Right. Um, you know, our reader is not the correct uh, wavelengths, but right. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> no, but I can try to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Any um, further questions about the data that Laura just presented? Okay. I think, uh, yeah, I think that's the most important thing. I mean, it remains the most important thing. Um, but I'm assuming no, um, other, no other updates from you, and we should invite Scott to the meetings, right? Is that the way we should be going? Um, there's no other updates. I know Scott was working um, like co-crystallizations and collected a bunch of empty data sets, so probably. So we should try to get Scott present, I think. Right. But if for me on this side, you know, especially from the Seattle people, it's kind of hard to to get them present here. Yeah, no, for <laughs> so, sure. Um, but I th I think one thing I need to do is set is um, I'm going to schedule a meeting with the team on this side, and I think 
that it would be good to have, you know, maybe Laura, Lori, um, people who are requesting structures to actually meet the people doing it. And then maybe we can sort of kick things back off to see where yeah. we're at. Because we've been, oh, over the summer, we made a bunch of surface mutants on for MER-E, trying to get the Pseudomonas and Acinetobacter structures. And then I know that we purified protein and it got sent to Scott, but I actually, um, usually it's no news is bad news here. Uh, it means that um, nothing works because um, we tend to just report positive results. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, that would be right. fantastic. If you were willing to, to do that, engage the team and a few of those people here, that would be fantastic. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And so just on, uh, yeah, to paraphrase you hang stuff at the moment, um, we just have a slight blockage on our prep, um, HPLC system, uh, which we're trying to repair so that he can resynthesize some of the, um, AZ compounds, the amines and have those evaluated, um, by, by you guys at Warwick again. So he's going to keep you posted about when those are likely to turn up. Those are important for the SSG, sorry, the um, CC for car proposal, because um, we're saying that, you know, some of the molecules we're making are modified version of the AZ compounds to try to combat efflux. And the most obvious thing to do is to make the amine compound that Yuhang's made. Um, and so, we, you know, to it would be useful to put that data in the proposal to say, yeah, we've made it, we measured it, and this is what happened. Um, so that compound still, you know, remains important for, for that as well as his thesis, but um, we don't have a a new pure sample of it yet because of a slight technical malfunction, which we'll solve pretty quickly, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted on when those compounds are going to be coming in. Okay, good, thank you. So just on that note, so Adrian, I think I sent an email a little few weeks ago, maybe. So the original, you know, we got three compounds from AstraZeneca. Um, you know, that was part of their willingness to send us additional analogs of the AZ compounds. And so it would be good to get the enzymology done on those compounds. I think I, I like I said, I requested this uh, a few weeks ago, I actually talked about it back in, I think in February, March. So hopefully, I mean, again, as part of the two things, one for the, for the CAR proposal, but secondly, you know, to kind of close the loop eventually with AstraZeneca, you know, they, they, they've been very uh, gracious in sending us compounds. So I think, that would be something that you could somehow get done that would be appreciated. And I think again, for also for the car proposal, it would be good to have that data for some of the um, ice design profile or the IC50s for those AZ compounds. Because some of them look like they had the potential to be multi-targeting based on the percent inhibition data, but we would be good to get the IC50 data for those compounds. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, did we get a, I feel like I got a note from them requesting, wanting to know what happened to their compounds. <laughs> yeah. So again, this, this is back to, again, you know, it's been a couple of years, you know, I don't know. It's at least, yeah. well, more than, well, more than a year. Um, you know, we went through quite a bit of discussion to get those compounds. And I think we kind of owe it to them to kind of close the loop on this. And we got crystal structures for them. So that's great. But it would be good also, I think, to get kind of close the loop on the entomology aspects of it. Yeah. Well, Actually, I want to go back to the crystallography thing again. Um, so back to kind of Adrian's comment about uh, including ADP and in some of the trials for the OSA compounds. I'm just wondering back to whether uh, I think there was some discussion at one point about using UMA to. Yeah. You know, to have UMA as included in the crystal trials uh, when we're, especially for the um, enamine compounds. Um, yes, so I did it. I, I got the crystals and I got the structure with the UMA as well, uh, as well as with the AMPCP, if I remember correctly. Um, yes, the only thing is that in this round, I couldn't do it because it was just, you know, it's pushed too many plates on the other side. Uh, but he's on my list of doing both the sustrate and the cofactor ATP analogs. Um, and I want no, to no, so for the no, so back 
So for the enamine compounds, again, enamine compounds, yes. we're talking about ATP competitive, we're, we're believe they're ATP competitive yeah. compounds. Yeah, but I, I'm but, also doing the UMI as well. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, okay. Maybe we're saying the same thing, but I'm a little unclear here. So the idea would be that you would create crystals with UMA bound and then try soaking in the enamine compounds. That's the initial idea, yes. Uh, okay. But I can also do co crystallizations. It's just that the more okay. co crystallizations you do, the more volume, right? For the co crystallization. I'm yeah, sorry. for crystallization, I need to run a lot of screens for every compound, a lot of crystal plates. While for soaking with one crystal plate, I can do multiple compounds. Right. So I would think that, I mean, yeah. So the question becomes I think if you look at, if I recall, looking at the structures, Part of the UMA uh, helps a little bit in organizing um, the loop. Um, and so the question is, in the co-crystallization study, which you said you can do more, I'm just wondering if co-crystallization with UMA bound um, with the enamine compounds would be worthwhile trying. I think so, yeah. Yeah, sure. OK. All right, thanks, Laura. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just on the list. It's just that the, yeah. It took me two weeks, I think, to run the other experiments. Um, yeah, is we don't have a big setup. Right, and I know. So I well. think at one point, one point you didn't necessarily. I think you had to resynthesize. Uh, yeah, I started it. Yeah, I started doing it, and then we started having issues with the temperature in the room, mm. and the process, so we need to synthesize the UMI here, and we I and Adrian as well needed for essays. So I didn't want to waste a lot of UMI on these when the crystals were dying constantly right. Um, right. but now that's solved so it's now back on and okay. yeah i just need to get back uh from my holidays i'm on holidays now <laughs> okay thank you but yeah it's, it's, it's ongoing very just a very quickly flag up um the suggestion from i think frank Von Delft was talking about the, uh, what's it called? The car system. Yeah, the car system. This is about soaking crudes, right? Crude mixers, I think. Is that what, what yeah. that is? Um, and so that means we could we could trial soaking with with lots of different compounds at the same time. Is that is that what this comment is about? I think so, yes. Is that... I mean, in, at, at this stage, we don't have an, um, enough molecules to do a useful SAR scan. But if we were to generate a bunch of molecules, then we might. Yeah, so in terms of MUR-D and E, I can easily make the crystals that that kind of experiment requires. In terms of MUR-C, I don't know yet. Uh, it depends on how well the APO crystals keep growing. Right. Uh, and mere effort haven't purified the protein yet. So, you know, it cannot all be tested. But we could just start with DNA &E, um, and give it a try. Right. But the, the screen here is, uh, am I right in thinking that it is a, a test, one test per small molecule, but the small molecule can be crude? Yeah. It's not that you have 500 molecules in one pot. Yeah, that, that's what I understand as well. I mean, it'd be nice not to have to purify everything. <laughs> That's like a chemist's dream, actually. That's true. <laughs> you just set stuff up and just give it to someone to tell you how it's gone. Um, so that would certainly speed things up. Um, okay, I guess I need to, um, I could engage uh, Warren, who I don't know, in a conversation about that possibility. Yeah, he. I'm sure he will be excited about trying these things. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> in a in the antiviral project that we're doing, we are increasingly using um, filters for um, problematic molecules that have low solubility and aggregation behavior, um, because these tend to interfere with assays. Um, we we need to start applying those more across the board for early stage projects where the concentration is being used to quite high. Um, I don't know what we would get if we put these um, atomized molecules through that. Um, but we'll try it and get back to people. I mean, we do need to make them more soluble. 
there's no question about it. But um, uh, as I said, it, it seems from Adrian's data or from Adrian's experiments that then that is not interfering with the output. So, so yeah. the new compounds that we got, they always say compounds, the follow ups, they, on, on my experiments, they have been behaving much better. No, yeah. solubility. Yeah. Okay. Well, likewise. All right. That's good to know. Yeah. Great. All right. So there's an action item on me. I'll follow up with that suggestion. All right. Um, any um other business that people would like to raise? All right, fine. So um so Bart, there's a there's a little action on you for a follow-up meeting with the SSGCID team and Mm -hmm. And maybe North American representatives and maybe Laura to 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 get together and catch up, if that's all right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um I was thinking Laura, Joe, and Laurie. Uh, people if there's anyone else that wants to do that uh meeting, let me know. Yep. Great. All right, fantastic. Okay, well there's nothing else, then I think we are all done. Okay.